Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Our very special guest today and friend of ATP, Dr. Bill Warner is here. You may know Dr. Bill from his many videos or books explaining Islam in English to Americans so we can understand what the philosophy is, what the religion means, and how it impacts us here in America. It's an honor to have you back, Dr. Bill. Well, I'm always glad to be given an audience on my favorite subject, which is political Islam. And so I'm so having we'll, fun here. We'll start with that. The Black Lives Matter movement is on the news, and it's pretty much all of the news 24-7 in the mainstream media. We've talked before about the most prominent hater of uh, many things white and certainly all things Jewish, uh, <laughs> Minister Farrakhan in the past. Today, let's tie the marriage knot together uh, between Farrakhan's Nation of Islam and the Black Lives Matter movement. Both are anti-Semitic, both don't like Jews, and both are anti-Israel. Um, what are your thoughts? Well, it's for, my, my first thought is, I notice the feelings, which just makes me do a sigh. It's just like, <sighs> there's a strong relationship between blacks and Islam. And we probably ought to explore this a little bit because people need to understand it. Yeah, let's do that. When Muslims speak to blacks, particularly black Americans, what they say is, Christianity is the religion of the white man. Islam is the religion of the black man. So that's their opening card. And what's interesting is, when I taught for eight years in a black university, I discovered that the most emotionally charged word was not the N word, but it was slave. That was, that cut deeper. The N word just made them angry. But the word slave, you could, there was a strength that went out of them. And so therefore I asked myself the question, why? The history of the black man and Islam starts with Muhammad. Muhammad had black slaves. His wife had a black slave, Baria, I think her name was. I mean, he had black slaves. We'd also have white slaves. He had pagan slaves, Jewish slaves, Christian slaves. So he was a fair man in that sense that he enslaved everyone who didn't believe in Islam. And by the way, you cannot enslave a Muslim according to the rules of Islam. Now, of course it happens, but we won't dwell on that now. So Muhammad had all kinds of slaves, including black ones. Now, interestingly enough, we know this from some of the Hadith, which are the traditions of Muhammad. Some of these black slaves were castrated because it turns out that it was a tradition of the Muslims that the Africans that came into, as slaves into Saudi, well, into Arabia were castrated. They were castrated in a peculiar way, not just the testicles, but also the penis. This may be more information than you want, but we're talking about the subject, so let's fill it out. What's interesting is, is that traditionally the guards at the mosque in Medina have always been castrated black slaves. I don't know if that still goes on today or not. But what I'm trying to say is, is that this is the start of Islam's relationship with the black man. Now there's only one word for a black man and only one word for, and the same word is used for a, uh, a slave, a black slave. It's very interesting. To my knowledge, I'm the first scholar who ever sat down and says, how many Arabic words are there that are involved in slavery? And I think the number is the 46 separate Arabic words. They go into fine detail. I'm told, I don't know this to be the true, that snow has many, snow has many names in the Inuit, Inuit. Is that how you say the Eskimos? I can't. That is, they have many words for it because snow is very important. So when I see in that you have a large vocabulary about slaves, for instance, let's take Abed, A-B-D is the word for African. It's also the word for black slave. There's only one word and it serves two functions. So this leads us to believe that the, there is a place in Islam for the black man, but it turned out to be a slave position. Now then, this goes, we can go into great de greater detail, but let's do this. Every slave that came to the North America and South America went through the hands of an Arabic, not an Arabic, but a Muslim slave trader. So therefore, Islam is greatly involved in the slavery of the black man. Now what is, remember I told you we were talking in an earlier session we did about how the rabbis did not want to know about the truth about Islam? Well, the same is enormously true about blacks do not want to know the history of Islam in Africa. So there's a long history there, but 
black Americans do not understand the real history at all. And it's almost impossible to tell them this. They simply, and 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 I can't hear you. So therefore we have the relationship between Muhammad, which means Islam and the black man. Got it. So as the numbers of uh, Americans running for Congress that happen to follow Muhammad is increasing. Will the anti-Semitism we hear in the Congress from the two most prominent uh, spewers of Jew hatred, Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib, do you expect that to increase if any more get elected? Yes. It's a short answer, but it's a direct answer. We're also going to see, you've touched on something very interesting. Islam has always planned to invade America and in, across a broad cultural front. This is a civilizational war. It's not like a hot war with bombs and bullets. We can win that kind of war easy, but this is a civilizational war. And so we have the problem of what are we going to do about it? Well, what we need to do about it is learn who the enemy is. And that's always, that's my philosophy. I'm, I'm an educator and I try to teach people what the facts of the matter are. Well, let's, let's talk about what you just touched on, which is jihad by immigration. Uh, uh, it's, it's happened throughout Europe. It's happening every day. Um, we've done shows with prominent people, for example, in Great Britain, where they say the civilization and culture has been dramatically altered, probably permanently. Uh, in France, there are no go zones for the police, fire, and other uh, civil uh, employees of the state because those places are self-administered Islamically. Uh, there's no assimilation there. They have imported their culture and their violence. Do you expect that to happen here? And does that seem to be the goal? Let's talk about how important immigration is to Islam. The calendar that we use now is based on the story of Christ. The calendar that Islam has, it's zero date, is not when the Quran was first revealed. It's not when Muhammad was born. It's when Muhammad immigrated from Mecca to Medina. Why is this? Because when he went to Medina, he changed. He became not just a preacher of religion, but he became a politician and a jihadist. What's important is that was what was successful. When he left Mecca, he had only about 150 followers, and that was after 13 years of preaching. That's not a very high return on your time investment. But once he went to Medina, he became a jihadist, and all of a sudden he now had something. He could make religion pay. And so he did. So therefore the calendar that starts in the Islamic calendar, it begins with the migration, Hijra. And their abbreviation for that is AH, after the Hijra. So that's what's important here. It is a critical part of the doctrine of Islam, which is to migrate. And notice what I've told you here, that's a lesson. When the Islam finally migrate, first violate, I'll say this right, first comes to your town. They love you, they're wonderful to be here, this is a wonderful country, we're so glad, we're so happy. Then once they get settled in, begins be the beginning of instant ongoing demands. Till finally they're completely disconcerted, <clears throat> disconcerted and don't wanna have anything to do with y'all unless it's trouble. That's what we're seeing in Europe. The problem is not the Muslims. We are the problem. We want to say, oh, we can all make this work out. The liberals have their own very version of it. And the conservatives, by and large, just don't want to hear about it. So we, therefore, migration is a critical problem. I'm going to teach you something that a Hindu friend of mine taught me. Demographics is final. There's no revolution after demographics. Well, when you're outvoted and the population percentages have flip-flopped, you're the minority and you no longer have control. I think that's what you mean. Yes, I do. And that control will be very ugly. It's laid out in the doctrine of Islam what that control will be. It's clearly laid out in the Sharia. The people don't want to know. Exactly. Thanks, Bill. Oh, and, thank you for, and thank you for joining us today on ATP Report. A special thank you to Dr. Bill Warner. Bill, tell our viewers how they can find you, please. Go to my website, politicalislam.com. I have videos. I have newsletters. <clears throat> I have books. And uh, you can also see me on YouTube. I have a Political Islam channel on YouTube. I urge you to learn more about Bill. And for those of you that haven't signed up yet, please subscribe to our free text message service. Simply send the word truth in your message box. 
address it to 88202 and push send. You'll get all of our shows like this one from Dr. Bill today and in the future, always for free and takes about five seconds. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Newsbaum. 